students today we will study about sex determination in human beings this is very important topic for the biology students it is taught in class 8 as well as in class 10th and 11th also so let us study sex determination in human beings sex determination can occur non genetically as well as genetically non genetical sex determination is found in many organisms but as we are discussing the sex determination in human beings so it must be clear to you all that it occurs genetically okay first of all one thing you have to keep in mind students that the number of pairs of chromosomes in an organism is fixed and it is 23 pairs for human beings meaning thereby human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes out of which 22 pairs are autosomes and one pair that is the last pair is known as sex chromosomes and human beings in human beings the female has the genetic makeup as 22 plus xx that is females have 22 plus xx that is 23 pairs of chromosomes whereas males have 22 plus xy that is 23 pairs of chromosomes okay so it is clear to you all that both male and female have 23 pairs of chromosome but female has 22 plus xx and male has 22 plus xy pairs second thing which you have to keep in mind students that gametes have half number of chromosomes both gametes join or fuse to form a zygote which again gets full set of chromosomes half from the male gamete that is sperm and another half from the female gamete that is egg so gametes sperm has half set of chromosomes and ovum or egg has half set of chromosomes and when sperm and ovum fuse they form the full set of chromosome in zygote this is the nature's way of making stable the chromosome number of a species okay since gametes have half and both the gametes combine to form a full set of chromosomes by this diagrammatic explanation you can easily understand male has 23 pairs out of which 21 are autosomes and one is sex chromosome last pair is sex chromosome and it is also known as allosomes okay and now let us and in male the last pair is xy whereas in female it is xx here in this diagrammatic depiction by the diagram it is very much clear to you that that the boy wearing tie has the sex chromosome as xy and the stylish girl has the sex chromosome as xx now from this graphic representation you can see female has xx as its genetic constitution xx chromosomes as sex chromosome and as i have told you earlier in gametes there is only half number of chromosomes the chromosomes get halved in gametes so when the female's genetic makeup is xx its gamete or egg or ovum will have only one x chromosome okay now let us see about the male as male's genetic constitution is xy so its gametes or sperm will have will have two types of chromosome in half of the sperm it will have x chromosome whereas whereas in another half of the sperms it will have y chromosome now when they combine when x combines with x then x in the zygote the genetic constitution will be xx and when there will be xx genetic com 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 composition then the girl or female child will be formed whereas when x combines with y type of sperm then that is egg egg containing x chromosome combines with sperm having y chromosome then the zygote will have xy as its genetic constitution and a male or a boy child will be formed will be born 
so students as it is clear to you all now that mother has only x type of gametes but father has got both x and y chromosomes in his gametes so it depends on the combination of gametes whether a male or a female child will be born if zygote has xx constitution the child will be a girl child and if the zygote has a xy constitution the child will be a boy since only father has got y chromosome in his gametes so he is responsible for the sex of the child okay and it is never sure which x will uh, x is, uh, will combine with y gamete or x will combine with x gamete okay when the genetic constitution is xx it will be a girl child and when the genetic constitution is xy then it will be a boy child hope students you understand this topic very well and now it is clear to you that mother is never responsible for the sex of the child but in our society mother is always blame for bearing girl child so it is, as a science student now it is clear to you all that it is the father who is responsible for the sex of the child okay hope students you understood this topic very nicely thank you